In today's video, we're going to be going over the 10 things that you need to be aware of before you book your excursion to make sure that you are making the right decision for you and your party on your cruise. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first and most important thing here is to understand your party's budget. This is something that you want to already have planned out before you even start to look at what excursions you want to book. In this budget, you want to include what it is that you have available to book the actual cruise itself and also to have some extra money to be able to take care of odds and ends while you're on the cruise. When you have that idea already taken care of, then you can look at and see what exactly can you afford to allocate towards actual excursion. This is so important to do because I think a lot of us do the opposite and we start booking everything and putting it all together. And before we know it, we're way out of budget and we regret it at the end because we spent so much money. If you can do that without really worrying and you're okay, by all means, go for it. But if you're somebody who this is your first cruise or you don't have money to spend extra like that, you want to have this already prepared because then you can go in and filter out different excursions, see which ones you would rather do versus others to make sure that you are booking an excursion that you are not only going to enjoy, but you can also afford. Number two is understanding your adventurous level. There is so many different excursions that you can have at different ports and you want to make sure that you are aware of what that actual excursion entails. There is some that are very calm and relaxing. Maybe you're taking a little stroll at a port and there's a guide explaining things to you. And there's other ones like what me and Amanda went on on our Disney cruise that are a lot more adventurous like zip lining in Jamaica or taking ATV tours in Mexico. You just wanna make sure that you are aware of this because this is money that you are spending and you wanna make sure that you're spending it right and actually have a good time. Number three is mobility. There's gonna be so many different ranges when it comes to this and you want to be able to be aware of what you and also your party can handle a lot of times there's a lot of walking there's a lot of climbing there's a lot of different things not only in the actual excursion but on the way to get there as well so you want to make sure that you're aware of that if you're somebody who needs a wheelchair some of them aren't really wheelchair accessible at least from what i could see but you can always check to make sure when you're looking at the details they usually do a good job listing what actually is going to go on in the excursion and also if they can accommodate you for any special mobility needs that is necessary. Number four is going to be time. This is something that you want to be aware of because when I first started booking excursions, I did not pay attention to this and it can catch you off guard. Some excursions will take all day when you are on the actual port. And it's important for you to be aware of this because if you are somebody who wanted to actually explore the port after your excursion, you are not gonna be able to if you book an excursion that is going to fill up the time that you you are there. Usually that excursion is going to get you to the actual port before the ship leaves so you don't have to worry about that. This again is more pertaining to if you want to explore the port that you're at or maybe you want to get back to the ship a little bit early and decompress and relax. You want to make sure that you are paying attention to the duration which that is all going to be found in the description of the actual excursions. You want to just be aware of this so that way you are making sure that you are making the right selection for you and your party. Number five is going to be location. But this is more pertaining to to kind of tying into what we've talked about in the last advice that I just gave. And that is if you are somebody who is going to a certain port that you wanted to just simply explore it, take it all in, relax, go at your own pace, you're going to want to make sure that when you are booking that excursion, it's either not going to eat away at the time that you have there, or if you don't want to book anything at all when you are going on that port. Number six is the activities. This is what you are primarily booking the excursions for, right? The different things like zip lining or ATVing or maybe canoeing, whatever it might be, when you are booking your excursion, I would look to see all the different options that you have available to do because there might be some activities that are also bundled. For instance, when we did zip lining in Jamaica, there was two different packages that you could select from. One of them could be just simply zip lining or the other one, which was zip lining and river tubing. If we were just kind of quickly going through and selecting things and just booking it without going through all the different activities, we would have missed it and missed out on a great time. Number seven is being aware of some potential conflicting plans. This is more pertaining to activities that you may have booked on the cruise that also coincide with what that day is at the port that you're at. There are some activities that may go up into the duration of when you're supposed to be there and could potentially conflict with different plans that you have on the actual ship. A lot of the different bookings that you make can be booked while you are docked at port. So this is 
something that you want to be aware of, not only just from the simple fact of thinking of, well, is this going to interfere with the time that I have, but also reminding yourself that you're going to need some time to decompress from the actual excursion, freshen up, whether it's going into the shower or just allow yourself to maybe take a nap before you do anything else. Number eight is going to be energy level. This is more pertaining to thinking about how much energy you are going to have from day one all the way to day four or however long you're going in. I think a lot of us don't really think of this when we're planning these things out because we think we're going to be ready. We're going to be amped up. But at the end of the day, we have to also be realistic and understand that our bodies are going through a lot of things at once, right? The stress of just getting everything ready to get there and get on the ship. And then the overwhelming of the different activities on the cruise that you're doing and all the different excursions and foods and the different time schedules that are being messed up and routines. Your body is taking in so much. This is something that you want to be aware of. And you want to also understand, have you booked too much stuff? Is there too many things that sound good on paper, but in actuality might be way too much and may dread actually going to because you're just exhausted and tired. Number nine is going to be the party size and also age. It's important to be aware of this because some of the different excursions require different things depending upon age and also the party size. For instance, when we went on the ATV tour, there was different ages where you could drive the actual ATV on your own versus if you are below a certain age, you would have to go onto the actual back of it and ride with a passenger. Of course, you can always see this in the description and they usually will do an amazing job at writing all of that out and letting you know the different requirements and the different expectations when it comes to that. Again, this is something that you want to be aware of because even though they may be able to still go, it might hinder the experience depending upon what they might have them do. It may not be the best choice for you and your party when it comes to choosing that excursion. Number 10 and the most important thing also in this list, and that is looking at reviews. They are going to make the excursion sound glamorous, amazing. The pictures are going to be awesome. But when you actually go on it, it can be a completely different story. When I was on my last cruise, it was a party that I overheard that was talking about an excursion that they went on. And they were talking about how awful it was, how it was a waste of money because it just seemed like the actual guide who was on the excursion didn't really care. And there was just so many different negatives that they were spewing as far as what that excursion was. And they couldn't believe it because they read online all the different descriptions and they saw the different photos and it was completely different. What is not going to be different is seeing different vlogs of different people going on these excursions and showing you what it's like at a first hand of them going on that excursion, which should be what you will experience when you're going on that cruise. So with that being said, you have now graduated to being a pro cruise excursion selector. And if you have any questions or thoughts or anything like that, please feel free to comment below. I will be more than happy to give even more advice to this and to give also experience. And if you have any other advice that you have when it comes to this, I would love to hear it in the comment section as well, because it is going to help so many different new cruisers or even pro cruisers who want to just elevate their excursion game. With that, if you did enjoy this video today, please make sure to hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.